Hi guys, and welcome back to the wonderful world of Pan Island. And have I got some beauties to show you today. Check these guys out. Yes, I have actually made these pens with my own two bare hands so that I can satisfy my constant need for new pen experiences. As you can see, these are made in a variety of materials. Some are oak. This is ancient oak. Oak. This is a teak. This is an acacia. And you can see the hardware comes in a variety of colors to suit your mood. And this one is an especially a feminine one in rose gold, but I like it. It goes really, really well. So in this video, I want to show you the viewer at home on your YouTube internet how to manufacture your very own pen using commonly found materials such as wood and metals and metalworking equipment that your grandfather may have in his garage or in its basement. So go down there and get that because those things are quite expensive and you will need one to fabricate a writing implement that will surpass that that you can purchase in the shops today. So let's get straight to it. As you can see, it's pretty much a lovely piece of wood. This is how it comes. You can buy it on eBay. There's plenty of people willing to sell you these offcuts from their projects. First things first, you mark a line. This delineates the grain so that when you carve this pen, you can put the two pieces back together, as you can see here, where the grain will start to match. Otherwise, you may get a strange effect. Now, that doesn't really apply for most designs, but it really depends on the texture of the wood, because sometimes the grain can flow one direction, or sometimes it can flow the other. Now, in addition to this piece of wood, you're going to need a hardware kit. And I'm going to let out all these pieces of the hardware kit, because they're essential to the next part of the project anyway. And you can see they contain a number of insertable components. The main component being, though, the brass tubes. You need the brass tubes because they form the center of your pan. And if I take this one apart and look inside there, you can see that shining interface. That's the brass tube. First things first, take your block of wood and mark it to the length of each of the tubes. And now what I'm going to do is cut this on the bandsaw here and here and drill a hole right through the middle, seven millimeters. That's a European size, seven millimeters. You don't have to be too accurate, but make sure your blank is as voidical as possible. That's a great job there. As you can see, these are two superb holes of the correct diameter. The next job is to get your epoxy resin and squoid out an appropriate amount. If you lay out a blob that's about the size of a dime, it'll be perfect. Make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Some people try to use super glue, but I find that super glue breaks free. Only resin gives you the bond you can trust. The next stage is to lubricate the end of your tube with the glue. That should be enough. Always insert with a twisting motion, always inwards, never outwards. Otherwise you will fill your hole. Check the tube is thoroughly through and then splooge your end. Let's do that again, just in case you weren't paying attention. Get the end nice and wet. Half an inch would be more than enough. Push it through, twisting motion, always forward, never back, all the way till it's completely through. There you go, bit more. And then wipe the splooge, and you're done. Leave that for 10 minutes. 
Now that the epoxy adhesive has more or less set, I'd like to introduce you to this little guy. I'm not sure of the technical name, but I call him Mr. Stabby. What we do is we take Mr. Stabby, which has the same diameter as the internal diameter of the brass tube, and it has a blade on the end. This cleans that, so we take that, shove that in the end, and this end piece reams it until it reaches the brass. That's why we didn't take a particularly accurate length of this when we cut it. As you can see, this one is ready. Now that the blanks are ready, you take your mandrel. Now this is a tool that helps you assemble the components necessary to complete your pan on your lathe. These are called bushings. They are used to separate the different parts of your pan. These are the same diameter of your hardware. You'll see why that's important in a moment. Simply insert your blanks ready to go. Now remember that line we drew? You can see it's important to align it, align it exactly the same way. Now I'm going to take this over to the lathe and show you how to lathe it. Now that's a very noisy process, so I won't be doing much talking, and I don't really know much about lathe tools, but you'll get the idea. Just, just watch. <laughs>
as you can see, we have two perfectly beautiful pieces of barrel. Now it's up to you how you want to finish them. As you could have... As you noticed, I only put a wax coating on it. I like to keep it natural. You can put super glue, resin, polish, whatever you want on it. It's your choice at the end of the day. Now the next stage is fitting the hardware. And I always recommend fitting the tip first. Now to do this, you'll need something to press it in. I often use the bench press. <clears throat> My preference is to use a drill press. I'll just hold that there and pull the handle down and that'll just squash that right on. Now what's important when you do this is that you have to follow the right sequence. If you put this piece in, you're going to be in trouble. So first put the tip, then put the retraction mechanism and stop when you reach the line right here. You'll see it on the barrel. Now it's time for the moment of truth. These are all the components pressed in together. We simply have to assemble what we got. First I put on this little beady thing in the middle. I don't know what it's called. Then I remove the rubber protective tip from the insert because nobody wants to be messing with that when they receive this pen. They just want to start right in. So get that off. We push it straight through. And because we followed that small little line, that indentation on there, and look, you can just about see it right there. When we expose the tip, it comes out at the perfect length. Simply insert the final piece and look at that. A beautiful pen. A pen fit for royalty. Look at that motion, so smooth. And of course, the fruits of our labor, the test. Penn Island is fantastic. And I think you guys will all agree. So I hope that's been of some use to you in your wonderful journey in your own pen island of creating and developing pen concepts and ideas out of new and innovative materials. If you'd like more pen hijinks from the island, please like, share, subscribe and tell your young friends to come and enjoy my pen island. Thanks for watching. <laughs>